Hi guys, it's Nancy. Welcome back. We have a new release from May 2022 for Kitchen Sink Stamps. I wanted to just let you guys know that Kitchen Sink Stamps is a high quality photopolymer stamp set manufactured here in the United States. Um, when you get these stamps, they are known for their layered stamps that have a very realistic look. They do come packaged between two pieces, a clear acetate, and then this color guide is separate. I move my stamps from one of the clear acetates to the color guide. You don't have to do that. This layering guide helps you if you're new to um, multiple stamping to be able to layer them. Them, but I do that. You can check out my other videos. I have a huge playlist of kitchen sink stamps. They also come with the suggested alignment guide, which tells you what layer to stamp them in. Sometimes you need to go one, two, three, four, five, or five, four, three, two, one, or three, five, four, two, one. You figure out what works for you. Each stamp set is a little different, I find. And this particular set has a larger lily. There is a smaller tiger lily set. So this is a larger one. It has a dragonfly, a couple of leaves, a stem, and a cute little um, ladybug. Okay. And then, of course, you have your packaging, which has some ideas on the back as well. Also, with kitchen sink stamps, you can download the SVG. And what the SVG is are um, cut files, and they are free at the time of purchase. So if you put these in your basket when you are checking out with your stamp set, an email will be sent to you. It'll be an instant download where you can download these um, cut files, and you can stamp on these to use um, with your stamp. So you can get this with your brother scan and cut. You can use it with your Cricut Joy, your regular Cricut, your silhouette machines. So for those of you that have invested in electronic machines so you don't have to buy dies, this is the perfect company to look into. Now, if you forget to put them in your basket at the time of purchase and you go back later and purchase them or you don't download them within 30 days, you will need to repurchase them. Um, the cost is very inexpensive. It's only around a dollar. All right, so I'm going to show you guys how to stamp this out, and this is what it's going to look like. One of my favorite flowers is the lily, and I believe tiger lilies are orange, but there are obviously many different colors of lilies. There's white lilies, yellow lilies, pink lilies, um, but you can see how realistic this looks. We have Mother's Day coming up next weekend, so if you order quickly, you'll be able to get this stamp set by then, and you can make some beautiful Mother's Day cards. So let's get into it. Um, the first tip I'm going to give you is I do recommend using a Misty or some kind of a stamp positioning tool, either the Misty, the Tim Holtz. There's a lot of different ones out there. It does help to make your alignment a little easier. Um, if you struggle with your alignment, the SVG also is a good tip to help you. In fact, did I cut mine apart already? Let me grab the outside here. Okay, guys, I had left it on my other desk. So all you do is, this is all the pieces that I cut out today. So I cut out three florals, some extra leaves, some stems, and so on. So if you struggle with layer stamping, you can actually use this as your guide. So I'm going to cut some of this apart and show you what I mean here. So instead of stamping directly on my paper, I can bring this outer part portion in. I'm going to bring that in and stick that down. And you can use some um, sticky grid or these mats. I know a lot of companies are selling them now. Whatever works to hold that down. And then your magnet. And now all you need to do is bring in your die cut. So your die cut will fit perfectly in there. So before I put my die cut in, I'm gonna bring in the first layer of the flower. And that is number one, which is usually the most solid layer. And you'll see that I can fit this puzzle piece, this in, right into the die cut. I'm gonna close my misty door. The next tip I'm going to give you is to condition your stamps with a little bit of Versamark ink. You really only need to do this um, the first couple of times that you stamp with a brand new stamp set. And that's because this um, photopolymer rubber has not been conditioned yet. So it sometimes may resist your ink. And I'm going to use these 
Pink Fresh Studio Inks, which we used on the last Stamp Wars, which was also sponsored by Kitchen Sink Stamp. So if you did not see that, go check out Stamp Wars and check out um, the sponsorship we had with Kitchen Sink Stamps and the beautiful uh, cards we made. And so since this is layer one, I'm going to go in with my lightest color, which is Coral Reef for this one. Also, if you go to Kitchen Sink Stamps website, there is a blog page and they have color guides. So what that means is um, the owner has stamped out several different colors of this image using different stamp companies. So you can see, or ink companies, so you can see them in Catherine Puller inks, Altenew inks, things like that, uh, just to give you an idea on what it would look like in different color combinations. And before we stamp that down, we're going to put our flower die cut back in here. And that looks pretty good. Now I have a little bit of miss spot there. There we go. And I don't normally worry when I miss a spot with the first layer because the second and third layers layer on top and they usually cover that up so now these do take a little bit of patience but I promise you the end result is worth it when you hand someone this card and they will not believe that you hand stamped it okay so we're gonna go with layer two which is this one right here and I can see through this I can line that up. And I'm really lining up this open space here, this open space here, along the bottom here. I wanna make sure all of those open spaces stay open. They don't have any of the stamp going in there. And again, I'm gonna use some Bursamark before I add my actual ink. This is only the second time I'm using the stamp set. And that just helps again that the ink goes into the stamp a little easier. Passion fruit is going to be my second layered color. I like using um, companies of inks where they sort of match. So you can use Altenew, Pink Fresh Studios, um, Catherine Puller inks, of course. Uh, but you can you can mix and match your ink colors. If you have different companies, I often mix like my Altenew, my Pink Fresh, my Hero Arts, and things like that. As long as they're the same type of ink. So try to keep, for example, your dye inks together and your um, distress oxides together and your pigment inks together. Try not to cross mix and match dye inks, oxides, and pigments because they all have a little bit of different formulation and they might affect your final image a little differently where if you're using all dye inks, then you know what your final outcome is going to be. It's just a matter of different colors from those different ink manufacturers. All right, so that looks pretty good for layer two. Okay, so now we're getting to layer three, and this is where this, this color overlay comes in handy because you can look through here and say, okay, where does this look like this is supposed to go before I put this stamp down? So I'm looking at this and just kind of looking at my alignment, and it looks like we have a couple of key points here. So we have down here on the bottom of this left petal, the curve over here, over here, there is um, kind of an open area here. So I want to make sure when I put my stamp in, I'm not covering that open area. So you can find some key points to know where to line up that next layer of stamp. So I know I want to line up on this side here. I want to line up this little tag over here. And then again, I noticed there was an open spot over here. I want to keep that pretty much open there. So I think that's pretty good. And don't fret. If you don't line it up perfectly, the average person is not going to notice. Okay, so for my third layer, I'm gonna use Berry Licious from Pink Fresh Studios. Okay, 
Okay, that's looking really good. I'm getting really excited when I see that all kind of come together. Okay, now the fourth layer, we're going to start incorporating, what are these called? Stamens. So fourth layer, again, I'm going to look through here. And this I'm really going to line up the center. So I can see that here we're starting to add these, these stamens in, the little pollen grabbers. So we really want to line those up. And then everything else kind of just falls into place. Okay, now for this flower, I did two different colors on this layer. I did my floral in candy apple. So I did the, the bottom portion of the flower here. And then for the stamen part, I'm gonna bring in some dark brown. So we're gonna use some Altenew Milk Chocolate. I'm just kind of ink up those. I hope that's the right nomenclature for that part of the flower. I've not done biology in a really long time. See how pretty that looks? Okay. Now there is one more final layer, which is just the final detail layer. And that is layer five. And layer five is really a shadow layer. So again, you're gonna line up the top of the floral elements there. And you can use a dark gray or a black on this. I'm gonna bring in some dark gray pure graphite from Altenew. Here's a secret. If you struggle with that last layer, leave it off. No one's ever gonna know. It makes it look, you know, just gives that extra touch of, of being finished, but Sometimes I know I struggle with that last layer. I leave it off. So if you're one of those people and you just, you know, get the layered stamp, you don't have to add that last layer. It, it finishes it, but no one's going to know that you didn't use it. it. The flower looks gorgeous without it. So there we have our floral, and you can see how easy it was to line up inside the die here. Doesn't that look 3D? It looks gorgeous. And now... I can actually just pop this up on here and really make this stand out. I think I'll do that. I think so. What I did before was I used actually almost those same colors and did this one. I think I'll add this flower. I'll pop this one up. We'll add another one. So let's stamp out a couple of leaves. And the stem and I'll show you how to do those now that one I already did the ladybug the ladybug was really easy to do let's do some leaves here so the leaves have I think three layers each so you have one a two a three a and then you have one B two B three B so let me make sure that I have these laid down the right way. I think that is correct for that one. Where's my magnet? And the other leaf, I believe, goes the other way. So that's the B leaf. So this is the A leaf. Okay. 
Okay. And we're going to bring in the fresh greens on this one. So I'm going to start with first layer. I'm going to make them both the same color. So for, oh, you know what else I should bring in? Let's do the stem while we're here. Let's just get them all out of the way. So the stem goes like this. And there's only two layers to the stem. So layer one, we're going to do all of these in grassy knoll. I am going to versa mark them quick. This is the second layer for the leaves and the final layer for the stem. So for this layer, we're going to use key lime on the leaves and the stem. There isn't a third layer for the stem. That's just two layers for the stem. Okay, and for the third layer on the leaves, we're going to use olive. stamped out this dragonfly yet so let's remove these pieces we'll glue those to our card with the flower in a moment let's do the dragonfly see how good he looks So there is a shadow layer for the dragonfly, and then there's a detailed layer. So you can pick which size you want to use. And really, I think he's only two parts. Yeah, there's this part and then a darker part for the body. So...
So let's pick out a teal blue color. How about teal? That might be too dark. Let's do, let's do Lagoon from Altenew. Cool. He looks good just like that. And then the second part is just his body. And I'm going to use Sapphire, which is a dark blue. Wow, okay, he looks great. He just needs a little shimmer on his wings and he is ready to fly away. And let me show you guys the ladybug since we're already here. Okay, come on, guy. The ladybug, it's a tiny little thing. She's so cute. Where is her die cut? I think I lost her die cut. Maybe that's the only one for her. Okay, so for the ladybug, I like to start with layer um, three. And three is the most detailed layer. Um, she's facing to the right. And we're gonna do that in black or dark gray. So I'm gonna use pure graphite, which is a really dark gray. Yeah, I think the smaller SVG for the ladybug might have gotten blown off the desk. I had so many things going on here today. Yeah, I don't see it. That's okay. It should be a smaller one. I think that's the shadow layer, but that's okay. Okay, so now that we can see, you know, where her body is, now we can go in and go, do this one kind of backwards. So this is layer three. Now I'm going to do layer two, and I can see through the stamp and see... Let me bring you guys down a little closer. I can see all the way through the stamp, and I can see the three dots on her body. So when I line this stamp up, I want to make sure that those three dots are within that stamp and I'm lining up her head, okay? So this is going to be layer two. I'm gonna use the same candy apple red for layer two. Or whatever color beetle you wanna make it, it doesn't have to be red. Okay, so there is layer two. And then layer one is going to be the full um, stamp to cover her full body. So layer one, we want that to be our lightest color of red. So we're going to use um, Berrylicious for that. There we have our little cute ladybug. Isn't she adorable? And I believe the ladybug goes in one direction and the dragonfly goes in the other direction. So let's put all of this together now. So I've already started this one where I stamped everything out just on a single card panel. I added a little blue sky behind there. But now I want to just add this extra layer. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of foam tape, I think, on this one. And think of all the different colors you could use on this set. They don't have to be pink. They can be yellow or orange or use gray inks to make them whitish.
Because these grow in clusters, right? You don't just get one flower out of them. These are my favorite. If anybody wants to send me stargazer lilies, which are the fuchsia ones, those are the ones I love. I love the floral scent of them. They're a little strong, but they are so beautiful. Okay, let me see here. I can get the backing off. I'm just going to grab the tweezers and I'm just going to grab the super fine glue here. Tuck that under. Okay, then we'll use our leaves to cover up my glue boo-boo. Nope, that's too stuck down. We're just going to have to put it over here. And then if you wanted to pop up another ladybug, you could do that. I'm not going to put this ladybug on there since we already have one. And then the dragonfly, I am going to put over here because that is pretty. And there we go. We have this dimensional looking, beautiful tiger lily card with a brand new stamp from Kitchen Sink Stamps using the stamps and the matching SVGs. And I'm actually going to leave that on there because I'll just hand this to my mom and she will love it. And then I'll, I'll mail the card that I made for her to one of our aunts. So there we go. Multi-step tiger lily from Kitchen Sink Stamps. If you had fun watching me create this card, please give this video a thumbs up. If you're interested in the stamp set and you want to purchase it, I will have the links down below for you. They are affiliate links, so they do help to support my channel. Thank you guys again for watching, and keep on stamping. Bye-bye.